So at this point in digital painting, we've established our refined paint layer. There's still lots of areas that are not touched with it. We have that on top of our base painting and we can turn off our sketch. We can even turn off our palette. We don't need that much anymore. I think it's still helpful to have the gray background. But what I, what I like about our custom brush and the refined paint layer is it looks a lot like a pastel drawing. And in that way, you know, your brush, I'm not varying the opacity of the brush very much. I'm just varying the colors I'm using, like choosing different pastels and then letting them blend into each other at about a 70% hardness. But you put that on top of our base painting and you get what looks like a fully, you know, rendered vision. So try not to, to zoom in too much. And now I'm just going to start modeling. Maybe make the brush a little tiny bit bigger to cover more ground. But modeling the, the fabric here and the hat. And then I can use these same settings for the shirt. I like to throw in some random colors. I can just steal them from myself. The light blues, the chromatic grays, the oranges. Because I'm working at only a 60% opacity here, each time I go over with a color, it makes a new color, and I can steal that. And with my brush settings, tilting the angle of the brush, each time I use it, it's going to give me a nicely varied edge. It's not going to look too digitally produced. Now the whole concept of this, I always get a little too ambitious, but I wanted to make him into a werewolf. But I want a believable digital painting of just Waldo first. To show you what's so great about digital painting, we can rotoscope on top, we can composite, we can play with different uh, layer styles and blending modes to kind of transform him into a werewolf. But we need to have what's called finish, a sense of finish underneath first, so that every part of the digital painting, the entire shape feels considered, not just forgotten about. And definitely the shirt and the hat feel forgotten about compared to the finish I have at this point on the face. So it's not about doing something photorealistic. It's not about being really meticulous and compulsive about every detail. It's about making everything match so that you don't have weakest links in the image. Now it takes a lot of processing for your computer to remember all these brush strokes. So it's good to have other things closed that you don't need open. Unfortunately, my computer is old. So I'm gonna quit some of these other programs. But that is how it works. Photoshop was seizing up, so I, I restarted it. That clears the cache. It clears your history. Remember, it can only hold so many steps back, so it's good to be able to actually fully close Photoshop when you're doing digital painting every once in a while. I've been guilty of not doing that. So it's not having to hold so many strokes in its memory. And then always, you know, hit Command S every once in a while to uh, consolidate all of that information so it doesn't seize up on you like it did on me. Okay, you can see how that continuation of the refined paint layer is progressing. I just need to have confidence in it and keep at it. And I'm opening up kind of all my reference here. I can see the different kind of lighting and sizes to play with, the things I want to combine. And even though you are going for a finish on everything, 
Don't be afraid to still take some chances. What I am not doing is moving to a different tool. Even though I might want to erase edges, I'm not going to move to the eraser right now. I want to keep everything just with this brush tool. Just keep the momentum going. Remember, digital painting is not trying to mimic photography. You get to make your own decisions, your own changes. I'm definitely customizing this hat inspired by the original illustration and by those different kind of costume references I found. And it can even have some random colors in there, especially in the white to kind of activate it. I'm mostly just paying attention to the values. So nothing feels untouched and unconsidered. Using a brush at 60% opacity, or close to that. It's my custom brush. You see it kind of defines the edge of the hair as I paint the hat around it. The same colors can be used on the shirt. Same approach. Got to layer a lot up. And I'm just using the brush tool and then holding down Option a lot to steal colors. I'm restarting Photoshop so far. Don't want to jinx it, but that's helped a lot in terms of it not seizing up. If you notice that your Photoshop brush starts to slow down a little bit, then you really want to save it and maybe consider restarting Photoshop. And definitely if you get that little pinwheel of death, if you're on a Mac. It just means your, your scratch disk is filling up all that temporary memory that it needs while processing all these commands. No matter how strong these computers get, that's kind of always an issue. Especially as these programs, these Adobe programs, get bigger and bigger with more and more capabilities. Managing the memory for your task is pretty important. Okay, I'm almost there. The goal is to finish off Waldo believably. Really attack it, going towards a finish with a lot of confidence. Of course, there are things that could be better, but we're not trying to go for perfection. We're just really trying to get introduced to all these techniques. There's something wonky about the eye still, but I don't want to get caught up in that. Also, eventually, if I finish this off, whether it's in the demo or not, I'm going to be putting glasses on him. This is one of the reasons I think it's nice to have a social media presence as a digital artist, because it kind of motivates you to do these silly things so that I can post my werewolf Waldo so at least by next Halloween, I'll have something. And digital so nice because you can just experiment. You can do things on different layers. You can push one file a variety of ways. This is a style of painting that's really just kind of direct mark making. It's a lot like a pastel drawing.
and as random as some of these colors are, all of the colors are pretty much based on an optical effect of what's representational and believable. But I could take the same file, play with the hue saturation, really stretch the colors to some strange places, and do it that way. I'm going to show you some of that in the following videos about how I can start converting them to a werewolf using some digital painting techniques and finishing techniques that are fun, a little different. Look at his jawline here, cheekbone. And you can work on both sides of every edge. It's true in traditional painting too and drawing. You're defining the, the edge on both sides of it. So in this case where the shirt shadows onto the neck, I can paint the shirt side, I can paint the neck side and kind of get to where I'm happy. Going for that, that goal of a finished look, meaning that there's a unified finish to every part of it. Doesn't mean it's all perfect, just means that every part feels fully considered. So that when your audience is looking at it, think of this for your final project, there isn't some obvious area that is glaring as not being as uh, carefully thought about as other areas the weakest link in the chain. Now when I did reset Photoshop, I did have to reset my brush settings as well. So remember, you can always play with those. The tilt, the pressure sensitivity, the angle jitter, the roundness, the texture of the brush, and you can make changes as you like. And you can use multiple brushes. I just tend to like to use one custom brush for most things. You can always go back in your history and take back some strokes. But in digital painting, you start building up a lot of history. That's why I changed the initial preferences in Photoshop under performance from just saving 50 steps to saving closer to 500 steps when you're doing digital painting. That's a lot of memory requirements on this machine. I want each of you to have enough experience with this that you know it's not as easy as the speed paintings online make it seem. But what always happens to me when I traditionally paint is I run out of paint and that's not going to happen either. 